Let's get weird into it. Number 10. Hole Punch Clouds Imagine you're a dedicated conspiracy theorist. You've spent years connecting the dots with red string on a cork board. And today is the day you're finally vindicated. You look up at the sky, and there it is. A perfect, impossibly neat circular hole punched directly into a thin layer of clouds. It's a UFO landing pad. It's a sky portal. It's proof that the government is testing its giant celestial cookie cutter. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but the truth is both way more scientific and somehow way dumber. These phenomena, officially called fall streak holes, happen in clouds made of supercooled water droplets. This is water that's below freezing temperature, but hasn't turned into ice yet, mostly because it's too pure and has nothing to cling to. It's the liquid equivalent of that one guy who refuses to leave the party, even though it's 4 a.m. and the music has stopped. All this lazy water needs is a little push, a kick in the pants to start the freezing process. That kick usually comes from an airplane. As a plane flies through the cloud layer, the rapid pressure drop over its wings or the particles in its exhaust are the perfect bullies. They force a few of the supercooled droplets to finally freeze. And once one droplet freezes, it sets off a chain reaction. The newly formed ice crystals start collecting their liquid neighbors, growing heavier and heavier, like they're starting a frosty cult. Eventually, they get so heavy they fall out of the cloud layer, creating that perfectly eerie hole. So no, it's not aliens. It's just physics being a dramatic show-off, as usual. Number 9. The Green Flash If you've ever watched a sunset over a perfectly flat horizon, like the ocean, you might have heard a legend about the Green Flash. It's a fleeting, blink-and-you'll-miss-it sliver of emerald light that appears on the very top edge of the sun, just as it dips below the horizon. For centuries, sailors and romantics swore it was real, while everyone else wrote it off as an old sea tale or too much rum. Pirates of the Caribbean even made a whole plot point about it signifying a soul returning from the dead. But the green flash is very real, and it's not a ghost ship indicator. It's a spectacular atmospheric magic trick. Your high school science teacher probably told you that Earth's atmosphere acts like a prism, bending light as it passes through. This is true. When the sun is low on the horizon, its light has to travel through the thickest, densest part of the atmosphere. Our air splits that sunlight into its component colors, just like a Pink Floyd album cover. The red and orange light, having longer wavelengths, bend the least. The blue and violet light, with their short, zippy wavelengths, bend the most. So, for a split second, the atmosphere creates a layered rainbow image of the sun. The red image sets first, followed by the orange, then yellow. The green image is next in line. But why don't we see a blue or violet flash, since they're the last to set? Because that blue light is what makes the sky blue. It's so good at scattering that by the time the sun is setting, most of the blue light has already been scattered away across the daytime sky. The sky basically used up all the blue. So green gets its moment of glory. It's a two-second magic trick performed by the entire planet, which is way more impressive than anything Captain Jack Sparrow ever did to find it. Number 8. Skyquakes You're sitting on your porch on a perfectly clear, calm day. No wind, no clouds, just blue. When suddenly, boom! A deep, resonant explosion rocks the air. It sounds like a cannon blast or a quarry explosion, but you live hundreds of miles from the nearest quarry. The windows rattle. Your dog freaks out. You look up, expecting to see a fighter jet or a meteor, but there's nothing. The sky is empty. You've just experienced a skyquake. Also known as Seneca guns, these mysterious atmospheric booms have been reported for centuries all over the world, from the shores of Lake Seneca in New York to the coasts of India. And the most frustrating part? Nobody knows for sure what they are. Scientists have a whole buffet of maybes to choose from, none of which are completely satisfying. One theory is that it's just thunder from a storm that's too far away to see. The sound waves getting trapped and focused by weird temperature layers in the atmosphere, traveling for hundreds of miles before hitting your eardrums. Another idea is that they're sonic booms from unseen aircraft, maybe military ones flying at extreme altitudes. Some even suggest they're meteors exploding high in the atmosphere, too small to leave a visible trail. Other, more exotic theories point to gas escaping from deep within the Earth's crust, or even solar shockwaves hitting our magnetosphere in just the right way. The problem is, for every theory, there are dozens of skyquake reports where it just doesn't fit. Basically, the sky is making loud, unexplained noises, and our best guess is... stuff. It's the planet's version of a car backfiring, 
and were all the perpetually startled pigeons. Number 7. Sprites, Elves, and Jets For a long time, airline pilots would occasionally report seeing something impossible. Colossal, fleeting flashes of red or blue light erupting from the tops of thunderstorms, reaching up towards the edge of space. They looked like giant jellyfish, columns, or demonic trees made of lightning. But these sightings were happening at altitudes where lightning wasn't supposed to exist, and they were gone in a millisecond. For decades, the scientific community dismissed these as optical illusions or pilot fatigue. The sky doesn't do that. Then, in 1989, someone accidentally caught one on camera. And suddenly, these mythical creatures were real. They're called transient luminous events, or TLEs, but they're better known by their whimsical, Tolkien-esque nicknames, sprites, elves, and blue jets. Sprites are the massive, reddish, jellyfish-looking ones that can be 30 miles tall. Blue jets are cones of blue light that shoot upwards from the thundercloud's core. And elves are expanding rings of light, hundreds of miles wide, that flash for a single millisecond in the ionosphere. The explanation is still being pieced together, but it has to do with the immense electrical fields generated by powerful lightning strikes inside the storm cloud. A massive positive lightning strike down to Earth can create an equally massive, but opposite, electrical imbalance in the upper atmosphere. The air up there is incredibly thin, so it ionizes differently than the thick air near the ground. The result is a spectacular high-altitude light show, a sort of atmospheric burp after the main lightning event. For decades, science insisted these things were imaginary. Now we know the sky has a whole secret psychedelic light show going on that we were just too groundbound to notice. Number 6. The Morning Glory Cloud Australia is known for things that are trying to kill you. Spiders, snakes, jellyfish, the sun. But in one remote corner of northern Australia, the sky itself creates something that looks like it could swallow the whole continent. It's called the Morning Glory Cloud. Imagine a perfectly uniform, impossibly long, rolling tube of a cloud. It can be up to 600 miles long, but only a mile or two high, and it barrels across the landscape at up to 40 miles per hour. It looks less like weather, and more like the planet is rolling up its yoga mat. These clouds appear with eerie predictability in the Gulf of Carpentaria, usually between September and November. Local glider pilots treat it like a surfing wave, riding the updraft at the front of the cloud for hundreds of miles. So what is this thing? That's where it gets murky. Scientists know it's a type of roll cloud, a solitary wave moving through the atmosphere. The best guess is that it's formed by a perfect storm of colliding sea breezes. A breeze from the Coral Sea on the east coast of the Cape York Peninsula moves inland during the day. At night, it collides with a breeze from the Gulf of Carpentaria on the west. This collision creates a wave in the atmosphere. Then, overnight, a cool air layer forms near the ground, which helps trap and amplify this wave as it travels west. When the morning sun hits, the moisture in the wave condenses, and suddenly you have a 600-mile-long cloud sausage rolling over your head. But this is still just a model. Why it only happens with such size and regularity in this one specific spot is still a bit of a meteorological head-scratcher. It's nature's most exclusive, most bizarre, and most ridiculously oversized piece of performance art. Number 5. Brinicles Let's go from the sky to deep beneath the Antarctic ice sheets, where nature has cooked up something straight out of a horror movie. It's called a brinicle, a portmanteau of brine and icicle, but a more accurate name would be the icy finger of death. When sea ice forms on the surface, it's a messy process. The salt and other impurities in the seawater get pushed out of the freezing water, creating a super salty, super cold slush called brine. This brine is much denser and has a much lower freezing point than the surrounding seawater. Sometimes, this brine finds a crack in the sea ice and begins to leak downwards. As this plume of hypersaline sub-zero liquid sinks, the much less salty seawater it touches freezes instantly on contact. This creates a hollow, growing tube of ice around the descending brine, an icicle that grows downwards from the inside out. It looks beautiful and delicate, like a glass sculpture. But as this icy finger reaches the seabed, all hell breaks loose for anything living there. Starfish sea urchins, and other slow-moving creatures on the ocean floor are completely defenseless. The brinicle continues to spread its icy web across the seafloor, instantly encasing them in a tomb of solid ice. It's a localized miniature ice age. We only managed to film this process for the first time in 2011, revealing a phenomenon that is both a stunning display of physics 
and a chillingly effective method of mass murder for unsuspecting starfish. Number 4. Catatumbo Lightning There's a spot in northwestern Venezuela where the Catatumbo River meets Lake Maracaibo that God apparently forgot to turn off. It's home to the most persistent, most concentrated lightning storm on the entire planet. It's not just a storm, it's a permanent atmospheric feature. Known as the Relampago del Catatumbo, or Catatumbo Lightning. This is a storm that rages for up to 10 hours a night, for as many as 260 nights a year. At its peak, you can see up to 28 lightning flashes per minute. The light is so intense it can be seen from almost 250 miles away, leading sailors to call it the Maracaibo Beacon. This isn't your average thunder and lightning. Much of it is cloud to cloud, creating a silent, flickering, rave-like spectacle that illuminates the night sky. The big question is, why there? What makes this one specific corner of the world the planet's lightning rod? The leading theory is a perfect cocktail of topography and wind. The Andes Mountains surround the Maracaibo Basin on three sides, creating a bowl. Warm, moist air blows in from the Caribbean Sea and gets trapped in this bowl. As the sun sets, cool mountain breezes sweep down the slopes of the Andes, forcing the warm, unstable air upwards with incredible speed. This rapid uplift creates the towering cumulonimbus clouds necessary for a thunderstorm. The presence of methane from the sprawling marshes and oil deposits below might also play a role, possibly increasing the conductivity of the air. But while scientists have the general recipe, the exact reason for its unbelievable intensity and permanence remains a mystery. It's as if the sky over this one lake is locked in a perpetual argument with itself. Number 3. The Hestalen Lights If you ever want to feel like you're in a low-budget X-Files episode, take a trip to the Hestalen Valley in rural Norway. Since at least the 1940s, residents and researchers have documented strange, unexplained lights in the sky. These aren't just little flickers. They are bright, floating orbs of light, sometimes white, yellow, or red, that can hang stationary for over an hour, silently drift through the valley, or zip around at incredible speeds. During a concentrated research period in the early 80s, these lights were being observed up to 20 times a week. Scientists set up automated research stations and have been studying them ever since, and they've managed to rule a lot of things out. They're not planes, not car headlights, not astronomical bodies, and not reflections. They are a real, physical, and profoundly weird phenomenon. The current leading scientific hypothesis is that the valley acts as a sort of giant natural battery. The geology is unique, with one side of the valley rich in copper and the other rich in zinc and iron. The sulfuric river water that flows between them could act as an electrolyte, creating an electrical field. This field could ionize the air and dust, creating pockets of glowing plasma. Other theories involve piezoelectricity from underground rock strain, or even some form of exotic radiation. But no single theory can explain all the different behaviors of the lights, why some are stable, why some move erratically, and why they change color. It's a genuine, ongoing scientific mystery that looks suspiciously like a UFO convention, but is probably just geology getting really, really weird. Number 2. Ball Lightning This is the holy grail of weird weather. For centuries, people have reported seeing small, glowing spheres of light, usually during thunderstorms, that behave in ways that defy physics. These spheres, known as ball lightning, can be anywhere from the size of a golf ball to a beach ball. They float, hover, and drift through the air, seemingly with a mind of their own. They've been seen passing through solid glass windows, drifting down airplane aisles, and even emerging from electrical outlets before vanishing, sometimes silently and sometimes with a loud bang. For a long time, mainstream science dismissed ball lightning as a myth or a hallucination, caused by the magnetic fields of a nearby lightning strike. The problem was, the stories were too consistent, too widespread, and reported by too many credible people. How could a blob of light last for 10 or 20 seconds and move independently? The first real breakthrough came in 2012 when scientists in China, who were studying regular lightning, accidentally recorded ball lightning with their spectrometers. They found that the sphere contained elements from the soil, silicon, iron, and calcium. This led to the leading theory today. When a powerful lightning bolt strikes the ground, it can vaporize silica in the soil, creating a cloud of silicon nanoparticles. This cloud of hot gas glows as the silicon burns, or oxidizes, in the air, held together by its own electrical charge. This model explains the color, the movement, and why it eventually fizzles out. But it's still a theory. 
It doesn't explain how it could pass through walls or last as long as some reports claim. It remains one of weather's most enigmatic and electrifying puzzles. A free-floating, glowing question mark. Number 1. The Tau's Hum Okay, this one isn't weather you can see, but it's an atmospheric phenomenon you can hear. Or, more accurately, that some people can't stop hearing. In the small town of Taos, New Mexico, and a few other places around the world like Bristol, England, a small percentage of the population is tormented by a persistent, low-frequency hum. It's described as a droning, maddening noise, similar to a diesel engine idling in the distance. The bizarre part is that most people can't hear it at all, and for those who can, it's often worse indoors and at night. Extensive investigations have been launched. Scientists have brought in sensitive microphones and acoustic equipment, but they can never detect any sound that corresponds to what the hearers are experiencing. They've ruled out industrial noise, gas lines, power lines, and tinnitus. It's not an internal ear ringing. People report that they can move in and out of the sound's range. The theories are all over the place. Some suggest it's caused by extremely low-frequency radio waves interacting with the human body, or microseisms, tiny, imperceptible earth tremors that only some people are sensitive to. One of the more compelling ideas is that it's a real, external sound, but it's at the absolute threshold of human hearing. So only people with exceptionally sensitive hearing in that specific low-frequency range can perceive it. But what's making the sound? Nobody knows. The planet might just have a faint, mysterious background hum, and a few unlucky people are tuned in to the frequency. For the residents who hear it, it's not a cool scientific mystery. It's a form of low-grade, inescapable psychological torture, delivered by a phantom orchestra with only one very boring instrument. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.